Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about shooting photos with flash in front of glass. I wanna let you know that my YouTube channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to make these type of videos without the influence from any specific camera brand. I shop at Adorama for tons of great deals on a wide variety of products, as well as the support of those products down the road. So if you end up being interested in any of the products discussed in this video, then please give Adorama a thank you by using the links in the description below. When I shoot weddings, there's a couple things I would call mortal enemies, and that is low light areas that just made focusing extremely difficult. Then there's videographers who use a wide angle lens and a gimbal 90% of the day, and they're constantly in between me and the couple. That was always infuriating. And maybe just general time delays. Those can be a pain too. Now that I'm in a new photography environment and that's capturing editorial portraits on a university campus, I found a new adversary, glass. It's everywhere. It's everywhere on the campus and it can be a complete deal breaker for a shot. It can maybe make me change gears or it's gonna increase my post-production time because I gotta get rid of all these reflections. And there's even times where I completely have to deviate and switch what I'm trying to do because it just doesn't work with the glass in the background because I'm a strobist, I love using flash photography and flash and glass just don't mix very well. So I thought I would share everything that I've been doing to negate the appearance of flash reflections in glass. First off, let's think about what's happening when glass is in the background of your image. Glass will mirror its surroundings at the same focal length that you're shooting at. This is why you may feel like, my flash is way out of the frame, but it's still showing up as a reflection in the image. And that's because glass is gonna show a wider area than what you're actually capturing. And when you darken the ambient light and then introduce flash, as is so common with flash photography, then that glass is gonna show it even more because the surrounding area is so dark because you've stopped down the ambient light and your flash sticks out like a sore thumb because it's the brightest thing in the scene, especially the modifier itself. That is the brightest point of light, so it's always gonna stick out. And this normally represents itself as a really chiseled highlight that is in the shape of your modifier. So the first thing you can do is try to use a longer focal length and increase the distance between you and the subject. This will compress your image more and enlarge your background. It's magnifying your background when you do this. And by doing so, there is less area in your background that has the potential to show the reflection of your flash. Therefore, giving you more flexibility with where you choose to position your flash. Next, you can consider bouncing your flash rather than using a direct modifier. The key here is making sure your bounce lighting is only going towards your subject and towards your background and not to the area behind you, the photographer. Because if you're illuminating that area behind you as well, then you're just showing more area that's gonna reflect in the glass. So you really wanna direct your light, maybe at like a 45 degree angle towards the space in between you and your subject. This also tends to work better when you've got a wide space behind you, and if the ceilings are shorter, then it's going to be easier to focus that light on the subject in front of you. Additionally, you can feather your modifiers, and this is gonna work best for soft boxes as well as reflective umbrellas. You can imagine if your soft box is showing its whole face to the glass, then that's what the glass is gonna reflect. But as you feather it and turn it more sideways, there's less of an area that is going to be illuminating in the glass. Now it takes a pretty strong feather to completely get rid of the reflection, and that might not be the light pattern you're looking for. But at a minimum, when it's turned more sideways, you're dealing with a much more narrow reflection that is easier to remove in post-production than you would be if it was completely facing your subject. If you don't know what feathering is, instead of pointing your light directly at your subject, you are lighting the area across them. Next, you can always raise your flash higher. This works similar to bouncing in that you're getting more of a top-down light that potentially will not show up in your background. I've been combining this a lot with feathering the light and that's given me the best results that I've had so far because I still like the light pattern when that light is coming from a downward angle and because it's feathered, if there is a reflection, it's very, very minor in the background. 
It also helps if you're shooting at a downward angle. The more downward you are, the less likely you are to show that higher space in the background. Um, but this doesn't always work because sometimes you want what is on your background, not the floor behind your subject. Another tip that you can do is if you can't get around that highlight, then take two shots. Take one where your lighting is on, then try to hold that position, turn off your flash trigger, and take another at the exact same settings. This basically gives you a clean slate that you can use to retouch the area that you have in the reflection. This works especially well if your reflection is really large in your background. Lastly, I'd also like to touch on shooting through glass because that's something I've been doing a lot too. If you're shooting through glass, then you as the photographer need to be on the opposite side of the glass as your flash. So if you're shooting a subject through glass, then you want the flash on the same side of the glass as your subject pointed towards them because if it's on the side shooting through the glass, then you're gonna get a major reflection and it's probably going to obstruct your subject. However, if you're on the same side of the glass as your subject, then it is not a problem to have your flash on the opposite side of the glass illuminating through them because you're not showing the glass at all. And it's still gonna have all the same qualities of light even though it's reflecting, it's not reflecting into your image and affecting anything. I hope these tips on shooting flash through glass helped you out. If it did, leave a like and comment below with any questions. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos and until next time, keep on shooting YouTube. Additionally, you can feather your modifier. This works especially well for soft boxes, beauty dish. Mm, you don't wanna feather a beauty dish.